Hi, welcome to the Holiday Park United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat Nelson. It's good to have you here. Come on in and look around. We have a lot of great people who love Jesus and are growing in their faith. We would love to have you join us for worship and join us in serving the Lord. We're so glad to have you here in the sanctuary as well as the YouTube audience at home. Hey, say, well, I got you YouTube audience's attention. You know what? We love to have you there sitting in your bunny slippers, drinking your coffee, watching us. But you know what? Why don't you make it a point once a month, just once a month, come down and see us, either the 830 or the 10 o'clock service. We know you're out there, but we'd love to see you. So do that for us. Come on down and, and look us in the face and say, hey, how you doing? That's for that's Pittsburgh. Okay. Events uh, and things happening in your church is on our web page and Facebook page. Our, face, our web page is www.holidayparkumc.org. Go there for things happening in your church. Okay, uh, we did be, we've been advertising Operation Christmas Child. This month, August, is the back-to-school supply uh, focus. So uh, sales are going on right now, so uh, please... Go out and buy those things that we need, like crayons and, and pencils and pads and different things like that. Back to school stuff. So that's for Operation Christmas Shower. There's a container in the back of the, the, back of the uh, 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 lobby for those uh, donations. Okay, church uh, directory, photo sittings. There are a lot of uh, uh, sittings uh, available in September and November. The sign-up sheets are in the lobby. Please go out there before you leave today and sign up to get your picture taken for the photo directory. It will not be a photo directory without you. I can't say that enough. Say Sanctuary Training Meeting. It's Wednesday, Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 14th at 6.30 p.m. It's in the chapel, so that's this week, uh, Wednesday evening. Please make a point to be there, particularly if you're going to be involved with children uh, in our church uh, with ministry. We also have the pool party uh, that's uh, uh, scheduled for the 30th of uh, August, but we want people to RSVP by the uh, 19th, if possible, to either uh, Becky Highland, her phone number is up on the screen now, or by Pastor Pat. So please contact one of those people and let us know you're coming to that. Inquire now. We still have that uh, part-time secretarial position open. Uh, if uh, you know somebody or yourself want, uh, are interested in that program, please go to our website and follow the directions there uh, to, uh, to apply for that position. Okay, the Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning Bible studies uh, are starting up on September 10th and 11th. You see there, 12 Daring Women of the Bible. That's what the Tuesday morning Bible study will, will be looking at in a book by uh, Hidden by Lisa Harper, will be the focus of the Wednesday morning Bible studies. We have Friday morning, the 10 a.m. men's Bible studies are going to begin September the 6th. Their focus initially will be the Gospel of Matthew. It might be a, a little bit of an organizational meeting, too. Uh, looking forward to see what the men might want to get into next. But initially, it'll be the Gospel of Matthew. Wednesday evening also starts September 11th. That's uh, uh, Pastor Pat is uh, facilitating that uh, study, Pilgrim's Progress to Christiana's Journey. So that will be the focus of the Wednesday evening Bible study, 6.30 p.m., starting September 11th. Okay, now before we talk to have Mr. Wozniak, Ron Wozniak, come up and put us on an attitude of worship, a little bird told me that there's somebody here who has reached triple digits. Can you imagine that? At least that's what I was told. Some things I keep to myself, some things I don't. Right, Paul? Where is, where is Paul Nelson? Yeah, he's looking for him. Triple digits, right? Today is Paul's birthday. I get fired if I didn't tell everybody. Okay. So, Paul, thank you, hey, thank you for being here, Paul, and happy birthday to you, buddy. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Blessed 
Worthy is Christ who has ransomed us by his blood from every tribe and tongue and nation, made his people a kingdom and priests to our God. Please remain standing and join me in that rousing hymn of praise, Holy, 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 number 64 in your hymnal. Please pray with me. Almighty God, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, a realm where all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Make us loyal followers of our living Lord, that we may always hear Jesus' word, follow Jesus' teachings, and live in Jesus' spirit. Hasten the day when each ye shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to your eternal glory. Amen. Please be seated. And listen to God's word that comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. <clears throat> to the angel of the church in Pergamum, write. These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, nor e not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, 
Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. This is the word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's just the two of you. Good. Well, here comes some more. Good to see you guys. How are you? Are you doing good? Doing good? You are the only girl. That's all right. I'm going to show you some things here. Just to see if you know what these are. I have this. I have this. I have this. You may not have seen one of these. It's a paper map of Pittsburgh. And this is this is a compass, you're right. Okay? And on my phone, do you know what I have on my phone? I do. I have maps, and this shows us where we are. And how do I get along using my phone? What's it called? There's three letters that my phone connects to. GPS, that means Global Positioning Services, and that's how my phone tells me where I need to go on my phone. But I also can use a paper map to see how to get around in Pittsburgh. And what is this? A compass, and what do I use this for? Pardon, what did you say? No, a compass is for direction. And do you know the four points on the compass? Excellent, excellent. And you can tell on the compass which direction you're going. You guys are pretty smart. So what do you use all these things for? Try and find your way somewhere, sure, so that you don't get lost. Now, there's other people in your lives besides this stuff to help you not get lost. Who would those people be? Your mom? Your dad? Okay, other people in your family? You're getting ready to go see these people in a few weeks. You'll have to get up early every morning to do it. Yeah. Your teachers? At school, they help you and give you directions. Now, if you look at all of these things and you listen to your parents and, and your teachers, the most important thing, the best way to use these things is to follow the directions. I can have this piece of paper in my car and I can have my phone hooked up to the GPS and I have a compass, but if I don't follow it, it's not going to do me any good at all. Same with our teachers and our parents. The most important thing is to follow the directions. Now, when we're in church and we learn about God, we have, in fact, some people call it a GPS. It's called God's Plan of Salvation, GPS. Where do we find that so that we can follow the directions on how to find God? There's a book, the Bible, yes. So when we read the Bible and we follow the directions that are in there, then we can find out how to go to heaven and we learn that the best way for us to get there is not to try and figure it out on our own, but to ask Jesus to be in charge of our lives and Jesus helps us to do that. The Bible gives us directions for getting along with God and for other people. In fact, in the Old Testament are 10 commandments that tell us how to get along with God and other people. In the New Testament, there's only two. Do you know what they are? The two commandments in the New Testament. You don't know? What were you going to say? Uh-huh. You follow God. But Jesus said it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. That's the first commandment. And the second commandment is to love each other as yourselves. So that's what the two commandments are in the New Testament. Sometimes 
you might hear people try and tell you that you don't have to listen to your teachers or your parents or do what the Bible tells you to do. But I can tell you, your parents love you very much. And God is for real and God is watching you and waiting to walk with you each and every day and take care of you. He loves you so much that he sent his only son Jesus to clear the way so that you and I and all of us could go to heaven to be with him. So if you don't want to get lost, you need to have the tools, you need to be able to follow the directions, use your GPS or your compass or your map and read your Bible because that's where you'll find God's GPS, God's plan of salvation and ask Jesus to be, help you to ask Jesus to be in charge of your lives and to help you walk with him each day. Let's have a prayer. Thank you, Jesus for giving us directions to follow in your word, the Bible, so that we can stay close to you. Please help us to ignore the devil when he tells us to not listen to our parents and to not listen to you. Help us to remember that you love us so much that Jesus makes it possible for us to be with you now and forever. Help us to ask Jesus to be in charge of our lives, no matter what anybody else says or does. And help us to trust you all the time. Thank you, God, for being here with us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Colleen. I invite you to go with me to God in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, thank you that we can be together to worship you. Thank you that you are our solid rock. And no matter what the time, no matter what the circumstance, in you, our anchor holds. Thank you, Lord, for being our dearest friend and our most trusted loved one. Thank you for bringing us here to this time and place. And thank you for being with us wherever we are. Help us to see your hand at work in the world and in the lives of people around us. Help us to trust you and stand on the promise of your presence at work throughout the circumstances of our lives. Give us the opportunities to encourage one another of your love and your forgiveness and your Holy Spirit to help us stay close to you. Please hear us as we pray. As we consider those people who are not present in our worship for whatever reason, please be with them. Please give us the opportunity to reach out to them with love and support and a prayer just for them. Please be with those who are sick or struggling and we ask, Lord, that you please heal them and make them well. For those who are suffering with grief, please hold them and comfort them and give them your perfect peace. And Lord, for all those for whom we pray, please surround each one with your Holy Spirit and lead them closer to yourself in your perfect plan for them. Please bring them to repentance and salvation. Thank you for your promise of second chances. Help each of us to repent of our sins and our shortcomings. Please clean our hearts and souls with your grace and your mercy. And please help us to walk with your Holy Spirit into a new day, into a whole new life with you. Heavenly Father, please strengthen your church, both here at Holiday Park and your church around the world. Please strengthen Christ followers everywhere who celebrate their place in your body, the church. Please protect them from harm. Please protect them from ongoing persecution. Please reassure them of your love and of our prayers. Please lead our president and government leaders. In this tumultuous time in which we live, please help the Christians in this country to turn to you in repentance so that we can receive your wisdom and your direction. Please help us to trust you. There's so much to be praying about. We know that you are in control and we know that you want us to care enough to pray. Lord, please help us to pray. Be with those who struggle for food and for safety and for some sense of peace in their hearts and their lives. Please protect the Jews from their many enemies. Please bless the land of Israel and the lands around Israel with your peace. In the midst of the many tragedies we hear about in the news, please be with the people involved. Please bring salvation to those who are separated from you and Lord, in every situation, please bring honor and glory to your name. Thank you for hearing our prayers that we pray in Jesus' name. And bless us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught all of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our main focus as a church and as a gathering of Christ followers comes from Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, where Jesus instructed his disciples and he commands us today. Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As a congregation, we stand on that promise of Jesus being with us as we organize and carry out our work of ministry and outreach and discipleship according to Jesus' words in Matthew 28. When you come in, you may have received our new holiday park happenings, our announcement sheet that shows how we are involved in ministry and discipleship. You may have seen the shoebox suggestions for Operation Christmas Child and picked up the brochure that goes with that. Your tithes, your gifts, your offerings, the generosity of how you give your time are always ways that God blesses our church to be blessings to others. As the ushers prepare to come forward to receive God, your tithes and offerings presented to God, let us take time to thank God, not only for giving to us so abundantly, but also to thank God for the opportunity to share generously with others. For those of you who have already given on site when you came in or through the online portal or who will yet mail your offering to the church, we give you thanks for responding so faithfully to God. Would the ushers please come forward as we give to God? Lord, we do give you thanks, and we praise your name for all that you are, for all that you enable us to be, for all of the difference that you make in each of our lives. Thank you for blessing us to be blessings, and we pray, Lord, your blessing on these tithes and the offerings, that they may be used to your glory and for the furtherance of your kingdom. And all this we lift up to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing as we sing together our next hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. Thank you. 
next scripture comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and your faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she, li- she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have until I come. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my Father. I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're following along with the disciple John as he wrote the letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor, Asia Minor during the first century. And today we will examine the churches of Pergamum and Thyatira. But before we do that, I want to recap the lessons from the first two churches. In the letters to the churches of Ephesus and Smyrna, Jesus commended them. And Jesus encouraged them for their works, for their obedience, and for their faithfulness. And the letters also warned them to keep Jesus as their first love and to even be willing to suffer on behalf of Jesus. God knew that the tests and the temptations to fall away would become more and more subtle and more difficult to identify. The Lord knew that if they ignored the warnings, the light of Jesus would stop shining through them and many people could be lost. God never changes. God's word never changes. God's love never fails. And everything that the churches were encouraged and warned about are words of encouragement and warning for us today as well. Pergamum and Thyatira were both strong congregations. They were established in their faith in Jesus. Jesus commended them in several ways. Yet they allowed the influences of the world to turn them away from the teachings of God. Both congregations, Pergamum and Thyatira, both were warned about their practices of eating food that had been sacrificed to idols, Satan's so-called deep secrets, and third, their acceptance of sexual immorality. Now, I don't understand about eating food sacrificed to idols and Satan's so-called deep secrets. Those things don't make sense to me. And as far as I know, those two things are not sins that the church struggles with today. What I do understand is today. Today, 
the church does struggle with sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 9 says this, and I quote, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor uh, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders. Unquote. What everybody immediately thinks about today is the sexual immorality of homosexuality. And while everyone seems to be focusing on the homosexuality business, we seem to gloss over the adultery that goes on and that I have seen in virtually every church where I've been a pastor. Sexual sins of all kinds are as offensive in God's eyes as any other sin. And sexual sin is forgivable in God's eyes when we repent of it, just as any other sin is forgivable when we repent of it. As a Christ follower, God's word must come first in our lives. We must not allow the influences of the world to turn us away from the teachings of God. There's a lie that goes around in churches. In fact, it's the oldest lie ever told in the church. I'm going to tell you what it is. The oldest lie ever told in the church is this. Once you ask Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, you can make it a habit of acting any way you want, be automatically forgiven, and still expect to go to heaven. That's the lie. That was the lie then. It's still the lie now that goes around in churches. And this is the kind of lie, this is the lie, that Christ followers always buy into before committing immorality of any kind. To the people of both Pergamum and Thyatira, Jesus reminds them to stay true to his word. Jesus told them and Jesus tells us, and I quote, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. That's Jesus talking. Jesus is the way. There were many voices that were clamoring for people's attention and allegiance in the first century, just as they are today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and also verse 7, describes the culture then. See how relevant this scripture is, because it also describes the culture today. 2 Timothy 3, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth, have nothing to do with them. That's the quote. When we are faced today with people teaching things that they say are true and of God, It's critical to our faith that we test the Spirit. God gives us his word, the Bible, to read and to learn and to use as a measuring stick against every other kind of teaching or doctrine that sets itself up as truth. We dare not let other people or influences turn us away from God and his holy word, the Bible. For our anchor to hold, we must stay true to God's word. To test the spirit, we have to pray. We must open our Bibles and then read it to learn and to see God's truth that's in the Bible. 
We must ask God to open our minds to understand. We must ask God to open our eyes to see his truth. And if the teaching that we are being presented with does not pass the Bible test, we know it's not true. We know to leave it alone. Romans chapter 12, verse 9, in the King James Version says, Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Now the word abhor means, Ick, get away from me. That's disgusting. And cleave means to hold on to something so tightly that it becomes a part of you. When we turn to Jesus, we trust Jesus. We trust Jesus with our past. We ask Jesus to forgive us for all of our sins. And the second thing that we must do when we turn to Jesus is also to trust Jesus with our future. Do you remember the story Chicken Little? Any of you remember that story? A couple of you, some of you do. Chicken Little is a children's story about a chicken. And a leaf fell on Chicken Little's tail feather. And Chicken Little ran around telling everyone, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's easy to spot someone who does not trust God with the future. They hear about something on the news or on social media or read it on the internet, and then they round, run around in circles like Chicken Little who thought the sky was falling. Their big line is, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And when they come to me as preacher, it turns into, what are you going to do to fix the world, preacher? The sky is falling. Jesus talks about the end times in Matthew 24, verses 11 through 13, when Jesus says, and I quote, And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Unquote. Things were going to get worse for the people of Thyatira and Pergamum. And things are going to get worse for us. But there's hope. There's hope. In John 15, verses 1 and 2, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me, in Jesus, that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Unquote. Reverend C.H. Spurgeon explains that verse by saying this, It is not the evil people, but the good people who have the promise of tribulation in this life. It is not the evil people, but the good people who have the promise of tribulation in this life. Jesus promises that those of us who love Jesus will be pruned. Pruning hurts. But I'll tell you, I'd rather be pruned so that I can bear more fruit for Jesus than to be cast away because I have fallen out of love with Jesus and have stopped bearing fruit. So when we hear about things getting worse in the world around us, trust God. Trust God to have a plan for the world. As the world infiltrates the church and threatens to corrupt the church, trust God to have a plan for the church. It's His church. And please, don't ask me to fix planet Earth. If, if you ask me to do that, or you ask me what, to, what you can do, I will tell you, God is almighty. God is in control. Trust God. There are some people who become 
disillusioned when they find out that the church is not perfect. And then they do the most ridiculous thing possible. They stop coming to church. We can't fix the world, but we can do what we can to fix our own little part of the world. We can't fix the whole church, but we can do something in our own little part of the church. We here at Holiday Park, United Methodist Church, we can help people both young and old remain steadfast in their faith in God and stay in love with Jesus to cleave to that which is good. I heard the story of a young man who taught a Sunday school class of lively young boys who were quite difficult to teach. And after a while, he became discouraged and he decided he was going to quit teaching. And one Sunday morning, he went early to his class to gather up his things. And two of his young boys were in the next room. They were unaware that the teacher could hear, hear them talking. And one boy announced that he was not going to come back to Sunday school anymore. If the teacher was going to quit, so was he. Well, the other boy couldn't be convinced that the teacher really was going to quit. He said, why, teacher won't quit. He told us God sent him to teach. And he said, God was his boss and he had to do what God said. He's God's man and he won't quit. And the young teacher who overheard the boys decided not to quit. Each one of us can do all that we can do that God calls us to do. We can do all that God calls us to do because God makes us able. You are the one God is calling to serve him. Jesus is very much aware of our humanity. Jesus knows our discouragement. Jesus knows the times we want to quit. And at those times, just do what you can. Jesus knows the temptations that we face. Jesus knows how easy it is to compromise God's holy and righteous standards and to ignore his word. God knows how tempting it is to gossip or to flirt or to be critical or to always try to be the center of attention. God knows how tempting it is to sneak off and be bad once in a while by doing the things that we would never do if the people we respect were watching us. God reminds us that with Jesus living in our hearts, we are God's man or we are God's woman. We won't quit. Jesus reminds us that we are not alone in our obedience to him. As Christ followers, Jesus gives us his Holy Spirit to help us and to encourage us and to remind us that we can too trust in all of God's promises, each and every one of them. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, and I quote, You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the rock eternal. Unquote. That's a promise that we can stand on. The rock on which our anchor holds secure. Perfect song. Perfect song. You can tell when someone's mind is not steadfast on the Lord. It shows. They're always worrying about the future. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 14 says, When times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider. The Lord has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, a man cannot discover anything about his future. You can also tell when someone is holding on to the peace of Jesus. Because the peace of Jesus is with those who trust Jesus in all their circumstances. And the only thing that we can know for sure as Christians about what's going to happen in the future 
is that someday, one day, each one of us will go to heaven and we will meet Jesus face to face. What a day of rejoicing that should be. Only God knows what tomorrow will bring because only God knows the future. Jesus promises a reward for those who persevere, those who hang in there to the end, those who hold fast to the truth of what Jesus said. Each one of us can, too, be all that God calls us to be because God makes us able. It's not enough for us to just trust God with our past and trust Him to have forgiven us for our past sins. That's important, but it's not enough. We must also trust God with the future. Keeping God's will, keeping God's plan at the center of our lives is how we live into God's perfect future with Jesus. James chapter 4, verse 15 says, You ought to say, If it is the Lord's will, we will, do, we will live and do this or that. James 4, 15, we, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. That's the quote. What that tells me is that we should always say, if it is the Lord's will or Lord willing, because only God knows the future. We don't. We are not almighty. God is. And we can trust God to be in control of both today and the future. Christ followers don't say, I can't, because that denies the power of God to make us able to do whatever he wants. Christ followers don't say, I will, because that makes out like we know the future or we can control the future. What Christ followers say is, I can, God willing, or I will, with God's help. As Christ followers, we say with God's help because we know that only with God's help can we overcome our sinful disabilities. If Jesus does not help us, we're helpless. With the help of Jesus, we can do everything God wants us to do. So, don't have a Messiah complex. You don't have to change the world. Just do what you can and be part of God's plan for you. Just do what you can. Place your life in the Master's hands. Just do what you can. Keep your eyes on the Master's plan. Just do what you can and know that God gives you the strength to do whatever God calls you to do. Just do what you can, even when things go wrong. Just do what you can when people can't get along. Just do what you can. Remember, Jesus will keep you strong to do whatever God calls you to do. The God we worship is almighty to save. Hallelujah. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord God, thank you for your salvation that comes to us in Jesus. Through Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit that you give to us, help us to do what we can, trusting you to lead us and guide us and secure us on Christ the solid rock. Amen.
As you leave, please remember to pick up our Holiday Park happenings. Make sure you get an insert for the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes so that you can bring in your school supplies for them and take a minute to sign up to have your picture taken for the photo directory, photo directory uh, that's available to you. And as you go from this place, my brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable in your faith always giving of yourselves generously to the work of the Lord, knowing that your work and your love for the Lord is not in vain. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Amen.